In Florida, take a look at this packed event hosted by a bookstore. It's not a book signing. People that were there last night to support former National Youth Poet Laureate Amanda Gorman, who donated 1,200 books to be given out, including 400 copies of her book and two other titles restricted at a Miami-Dade County public school for kindergarten through eighth graders. The books are being restricted after one parent's complaint. Gorman's book is titled The Hill We Climb. It's the same title as the poem she read at President Biden's inauguration in 2021 as the youngest inaugural poet in U.S. history. Months later, her book was published and had been available at the school library for all students until one parent's complaint, and by the way, that parent did not actually read the book. Now the school district says only middle school students have access uh, to Amanda Gorman's book. The parent's complaint stated it includes, quote, hate messages. The parent took issue with just some lines Gorman recited. Here are a few of them. We've braved the belly of the beast. We've learned that quiet isn't always peace. And the norms and notions of what just is isn't always just is. And yet the dawn is ours before we knew it. Somehow we do it. Somehow we've weathered and witnessed a nation that isn't broken, but simply unfinished. And Amanda Gorman joins us now. Um, it's so great just hearing you do that inaugural poem again. It's lovely. It's great to have you back. Uh, and I'm sorry it's under Thank these you. circumstances. When you've heard this, uh, what was your initial reaction when you found out this, that your book was being restricted by somebody who had not actually even read it? Mm. I think my first response was this dual experience of shock and grief for the first part, because over 40 million people saw that moment at the inauguration. And I couldn't imagine a reason of erasing that from a bookshelf for young readers to see. And on the flip side, I felt this anguish and pain because so much of the excitement that I had while writing The Hill We Climb was in knowing that young people would be able to see themselves represented in this moment in our democratic history. And so to have that representation taken away from young people just felt devastating. You know, I and mean, this is happening obviously in places across the country. And often it's parents who have not read any of these books. They often just get a list of books from uh, an organization, a conservative organization that wants books removed. And they send that in and to show up at a school board meeting and the books are taken out. I think you get absolutely to the core of the issue, which is that you can, in effect, ban, restrict, remove a book like that. All it takes is one person, often who isn't a parent or doesn't even need to read that work, to sign a complaint. And that complaint can be accomplished pretty quickly, as we saw with what happened with my book. That form can even be filled out inaccurately, and that can still lead to that book being restricted for that school, that community, that library. And so what we're witnessing is a real loophole in the educational system where it's really easy to mobilize a small select group of people to ban thousands of books over time. Now to get your book, you've got to go to yeah. the media center. You, I understand you have to, in the school, you have to prove that you're at a fifth grade reading level in order to get mm -hmm. access to the book. That's, kids aren't going to discover a book like that. No, I, I think you're absolutely correct. And one of the things that keeps getting said around the circumstance of my book that's been banned and other books that were removed from the elementary school shelves at that same school due to that same complaint, um, a lot of what gets said is, oh, it's not banned. It's just moved to the elementary, sorry, to the middle school. But what you have to keep in mind, exactly like what you said, if a child now needs to jump over hurdles of going to a different location, speaking to media specialists, proving themselves worthy and ready of reading a book, those types of hurdles are going to really impede students from having a free ranging, welcoming experience of being able to pull a book from a bookshelf and experience it. And what you just said also about the role of parents I am totally accepting and at peace with the fact that not every parent, not every guardian is going to like my work. And I think that's absolutely par for the course. But I think the issue is when one person's dislike for my work leads to everyone else not having access to that book, 
we're really encroaching on the rights of families and parents and teachers and libraries to really create access for that that exists for other people who still want that door you know, there have been a lot of questions about the motivation behind uh, a number of these people who are doing this in school districts. Our, our correspondent, Ellie Reeve, actually went to a Moms for Liberty school board meeting, which is a, becoming a nationwide group of, of, uh, of, 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 uh, of people who are uh, behind this, um, and talked to a leader of a, of a group from Moms for Liberty. I just want to play some of what she had to say. Mm. To me, it sounds like you're saying there's some kind of high-level coordinated effort to make more children trans and gay. Yes. Yeah. Well, who's directing that? Teachers unions and um, our president and a lot of funding sources and teachers unions are also heavily backing the curriculum that we're bringing into schools. Why would they want more kids to be gay and trans? Because it breaks down the family unit, which breaks down traditional conservative values. It breaks down a lot of things in this country. It changes the way that people think it changes the way that people um, handle politics. Which is sort of a fascinating unpeeling of the onion that at the core, for, for this woman in particular, the, the, she believes this is part of a conspiracy by teacher unions and, and, and uh, others to, to destroy conservative values and destroy the American family. Does that make any sense to you? It absolutely makes sense to me and explains why we've seen such an increase and in spike in book bans over the past few years. For example, out of the 2000 500 plus book bans that we saw last year, the majority of them, according to the Washington Post, came from just 11 people. And so what we're seeing is that this book banning isn't representative of the opinions and instincts of most parents, teachers, students, but from a really small subset of people who believe that they're protecting children from indoctrination of ideas of race, of gender of sexuality, but at the end of the day, what they're ultimately doing is eradicating the freedom of children and students from exploring those issues in a safe and protected and educational space that can be combined with the love of learning and reading. You're also partnering with PEN America to help others speak out against book banning. How can people help? Absolutely. So if you want to learn more about book restrictions and removals and also how you can have your voice heard, you can visit pen.org slash action. We've made a web page there where you can get all the information you need about standing up. All right. Amanda Gorman, thanks so much. Thank you.